Okay, so that's what a church is. So a church is a group of believers, and it's a group of believers that are gathered for the purpose of Jesus Christ, gathered in the name of Christ, not just gathered for any purpose. That's what a church is. It's the people. So let's just cover a few things that a church is not, then, obviously. So a church is not the building, right? Which is the most common way the word church is used. Like you'll drive down the road and people say, oh, that's a nice church, and that's a nice church. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, missionaries that travel, you know, go to foreign countries and they're meant to be in the church planting business, right? So they're meant to be gathering groups of people. But often what missionaries do, and I... You know, I personally believe, you know, a lot of it is money wasted. You know, they're going there and they're planting churches. And what they mean by that is they're going over there and they're spending hours and hours and, and hundreds and thousands of dollars of resources putting buildings up in this foreign country. And you just think, you just wonder that time that is spent building these buildings, the time that is spent gathering all those resources, trying to go around getting the support and getting the money just to build these buildings in other countries. I mean, that's not what their goal should be. Their goal is meant to be gathering people. So they're not planting churches when they're just building big buildings over in another country. Um, they may just be planting one church if they're building this building. But, you know, that should not be their goal, to build all these buildings and spend all these resources and, and time and money unnecessarily. You know, I don't have a problem if a church needs a building, but oftentimes when I read these missionary letters, that seems to be the focus. You know, they go over there and, you know, they have this church um, and, and their main goal is to get this building up and running. <clears throat> so a church is not a building. You know, and church is not a single part of the gathering either. So church is not only the preaching. It's not only the singing uh, when we gather together. It's, it's the, the fact that we are gathered together here. Um, and the reason why I just want to make that point is even though we gather together in the name of Jesus and there is no preaching, that is still church. Because, you know, often people get this mentality, mentality that, you know, let's say a Wednesday night or a Friday night prayer meeting, that's like different to church. Like church is Sunday, and church is when we dress up, and church is when we, we, we have all these standards that we have for, for church on Sunday. But then when you go to the Wednesday night prayer meeting, all those standards, it's almost like it's revealing all the inconsistencies in people's standards. Because if you're going to wear a suit and a tie on Sunday morning, and you think that's how you should dress for church, well, why don't you dress like that on Wednesday night prayer meeting or Friday night prayer meeting. Or even if the church gets together to break bread together and just have singing, maybe you don't even have prayer, maybe you don't even have Bible reading, but you're gathered in the purpose uh, for the purpose of Jesus Christ, that's technically still church. But nobody's going to be in a three-piece suit just getting together to break bread and have dinner. So, you know, it's the whole time we're together. And, you know, you know and I would definitely encourage you uh, to always be here for the whole time. Um, you know, often when, when I was in churches previously, you know, it just so happens, you know, me and Kevin were talking about this just best practice of having the songs first and then the preaching. Often what a lot of people can't do is they will skip the first part and then they'll just make it there for the preaching. Um, so, you know, they know that there's about 15 minutes of songs and announcements and then they'll just come late and then they'll rock up just for the preaching because that's all they want to be a part of. And, you know, I'm not going to force anyone or condemn anyone for, for not... Uh, coming or you know ha having that mentality to not come I understand you know people you know maybe don't wake up on time or it's hard to get their uh, family together or whatever and, and don't come on time to church but I think if our heart is the heart of you know I don't want to be there for the singing I don't want to be there for the prayer but I want to be there for the preaching and almost lifting up one part of the church gathering over another I don't think that's right and I think you're just uh, you know you'd be missing out on blessings because you know, the, 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 all the parts of church are profitable for us. You know, the singing is profitable for us. The reading is profitable for you. The prayer is profitable and the preaching is profitable and the eating together is profitable. So I just think it's, uh, you know, you'll just miss out if, uh, if you're not there for the whole thing. Um, yeah, so it's not a single part of the gathering. It's um, the, ti the time we're together. What's another thing that church is not? Church is not uh, a religious ritual, which is what people uh, often think, especially from Catholics or Orthodox or people that are used to saying, you know, I go to church and it, it is this religious ritual that they go to and they tick it off on their spiritual checklist and they think, well, I've done this spiritual thing, therefore I'm more holy. 
You know, good works will never make you more holy. Church doesn't make you more holy. And church is not the only the things that we're doing in this church. So it's not uh, a religious ritual. Now, you know, good works don't make you more holy. You know, they'll make you more profitable to others, as we lead, uh, uh, learn in James 2. It'll make you more obedient to God. It'll give you a better relationship with God. And it gives you a better relationship with others as well. It'll give you more eternal rewards, but it doesn't make you more holy or more separated. That's what faith does and the blood of Jesus Christ. All right, what's another thing that a church is not? A church is not a legal entity. So even if a group ha isn't registered as a corporation or isn't registered as an ABN, doesn't make them not a legitimate church. Um, you know, and that's why, you know, when, when we use the word church incorrectly, it's a good idea to correct your children, you know, correct people. Or well, not necessarily correct people, you know, you don't want to just be correcting everybody. But I think definitely correcting your children. Like if your children use the word words incorrectly, I think it's a good idea to correct them so that they have the right ideas with the words that they use. You know, Simon was reading this book and he was uh, looking at, uh, you know, these people walking into a church building. And he was saying, oh, look at the, the big church and the people. And I corrected him saying, no, no, that's, that's just a building. The people are the church. And, and I make it a point when my, my children use words incorrectly uh, to correct them. And, you know, we as believers should also use words correctly because if we use words incorrectly, we are just perpetuating sometimes a false idea. So a church is not a building. A church is not a, a single part of the gathering. A church is not a religious ritual. Um, it's not a legal entity. You know, therefore, a church is a legitimate church, even if it doesn't have any of these things.